Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I want to talk about an SR hero who is incredibly important to build for Ancient's Call, specifically the Slepnir fight, because, and that's Olivier. And that's because he is an incredible character that can provide a lot of buffs to your other characters. So he makes a perfect support character for that battle. So, let's begin by talking about the way you build him. And this video will focus more on the minimum requirements to use him for the fight than a fully built one. Okay. Now, first things first, I should mention that I'm not quite sure how many upgrades you need to put into Olivier for this fight. In large part because there is some AoE damage that will be dealt to your characters when you're fighting Slepnir. And so regarding the upgrades, I could be wrong because I haven't actually played the fight myself. I will update details about this in the video description as I get access to the fight, which is supposed to be released on, what was it? November 21st or November 28th. I can't recall which date. In any case though, um, First things first, I should mention, because this is a minimal, uh, minimum requirement build, my Olivier won't have double class mastery as a result. So, not having double class mastery on a character that is a crossover character means that I don't actually have access to his, attack, his strength bond, which increases his attack value, right? My Olivier, to be useful for the fight needs to be in the uh, Erebonian Prince class, which does unlock the Toughness Bond. So that's actually arguably more important because with the Toughness Bond, he has more hit points to survive uh, the AoE attack from Slipnir. And if you get all these bonds upgraded, you'll be able to unlock the Heart Bond anyways. And if as you upgrade the Heart Bond, uh, Olivier will have more survivability. So. That is my current status on Olivier, uh, very much still being built right now for the Ancient's Call fights. So, without double class mastery, what you want to do on Olivier, first of all, is to get go from Archer to Noble to Erebonian Prince. Because this method unlocks all the skills you need to use Olivier in this fight, which are Aim, Excitation, and Roaring Bomb. He actually begins with Roaring Bomb, so the other skills don't particularly matter. Right? Uh, don't get me wrong though, his skills from his Bard class are incredibly powerful and useful. It's just that they're not useful in this specific fight against Slepnir. So the most, the, for example, in particular, the Heartless Requiem skill from Bard is especially useful because it's an AoE attack skill that also applies cannot act again effects on enemy characters with a 5 span radius around himself. So very often, in PvP especially, what you would do is you'd move Olivier up, activate let's say aim, and then activate the Heartless Requiem skill. And then suddenly the enemies can't act again. So that would be how you would use that skill normally. But once again, you don't need that skill for the Slepnir fight, so we'll just ignore it. His talent. I'm just going to talk about his talent at 5 stars, because when you get Olivier from the event, you really should get him at 5 stars. And you're not that likely to be able to have time to farm 150 shards of him to get him up to 6 stars. So, his talent is Amber Love, where when unit hit points is at 100%, attack increases by 25%. In addition, after taking action, damage taken by 4 allies within 2 blocks is reduced by 10%, and this effect lasts 2 turns. It's actually a very important effect because being able to reduce the damage your allies take is probably the key for having your character survive in the Ancient's Call battle. Right? In particular, if you can raise your tank to have a damage reduction effect of 100%, He'll take no, da no damage from Slepnir. So this talent is very, very important. Other than Amber Love, Roaring Bomb also supports that. 
because Roaring Bomb will apply a debuff which reduces the enemy's damage dealt by 20%, less than 2 turns. So effectively, if you consider these two together, Amber Love 10%, Roaring Bomb another 20%, you're already getting 30% damage reduction on the enemy. You just need to figure out a way to get another 70% damage reduction and your tank really can't be killed. So that 70%, for example, can come from, let's say, uh, last rights would add 40%, right? And then you might need, let's say, I don't know, uh, and then you'll need 30% more. How you get that 30% may be tough, but there are various ways. So, for example, Emrek in particular can pretty easily stack it. If you have, let's say, a Gaius Armor, there's another 10% physical damage reduction, right? Uh, if you have, let's say, Royal Calvary, that's a 45% damage reduction. Emrek's Talent adds another 20% damage reduction when attacked. And then maybe you would throw in, let's say, uh, at that point, you know, Bloodline Magic Armor can activate for 30% damage reduction. Heavy Shield has the same effect, right? 50% damage reduction effect. And then other than that, is there any way to get more damage reduction? I think this already crossed 100%. Um, so, yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, let's just calculate that out. Emmerich, 45% plus 20%, 65%. Uh, oh. 65% plus 10%, some, uh, 75% plus the talent from Olivier, 85% damage reduction. Um, maybe a, a Steel Enchant, right? Steel Enchant offers 10% damage reduction. So that's 95% damage reduction, and you just need 5% more at that point. And that 5% can very easily come from the Roaring Bomb effect. So there you go. All right. So with the death, with so this is why Olivier is so important because he effectively offers thirty percent damage reduction in the fight. Now, with that mentioned, let's talk about other parts of Olivier. So because I'm using Olivier purely for the damage reduction effect, and I probably won't have enough moonstones to get his double class mastery. I'm going to ignore the second class mastery. Okay. So my Olivier will be just an Erebonian prince. In terms of his soldiers then, his soldier boost actually starts off at 5% hit points, 5% attack, 10% defense, and 5% magic defense. It's very, very spread out. His third bond increases attack and defense. Mine is not Mine is not complete as a side note, but that's the two stats it increases. So in total, the final stats are actually 15% hit point increase, 30% attack increase, 35% defense increase, and 15% magic defense increase for the soldiers. The 30% attack may not seem like that much, but then consider the fact that his talent also increases the damage by 25%, right? So you're looking at 25% additional attack for the soldiers, meaning effectively it's actually 55% attack increase on the soldiers, and he himself also gets the 25% attack boost, which is amazing. So, in terms of soldiers he gets from the training ground, he gets only two of them. The first one is Sky Archer for a ranged attacker, and the second one is Angels. From his classes, he gets Mass Maids and Mist Dancers, from the Erebonian Prince class, and then from his Bard class, he gets High Elf and Sorceress. His best soldier overall is probably considered Sorceress, uh, because, well, the Sorceresses have a 45% attack increase at 100% hit points, right? So that 45% attack increase with another 25%, you know, it's just ridiculously powerful Sorceresses as a result. However, sorceresses unlock from the bard class, which I don't have access to due to lack of runestones. So if you don't have access to the sorceresses, sky archers are a great second choice. Because sky archers, when attacking, they do get an attack increase. Right? My, I should mention right now that my 
Sky Archers are not at level 10 at this time, right? They're currently at level 8. So that's why the attack increase is only at 24%. But clearly, just from looking at this, it goes to 27% and then to 30% attack increase. So, 30% you know, attack increase is still very, very good. It may not be quite as high as the Sorcerer's 45%, but it's a solid choice. And in the first place, let's be honest, uh, Olivier will likely be too busy activating Excitation and Roaring Bomb to have very many turns where he does ranged attacks. Don't get me wrong, he does occasionally do ranged attacks, but it's not that frequent. Uh, for example, you'll see this in the following clip. So you can basically see that in that turn, he first activated Excitation, and then several times he used, let's say, Aim and Roaring Bomb when I fast forwarded, before finally doing one ranged attack on the enemy when he had an opportunity. So, with that said, let's talk about Olivier's gear, right, and enchants. In truth, Olivier, you will not build a custom set of gear for him just for this fight, unless you had multiple copies of these equipment. Uh, more likely, you'll probably only have one of the ideal equipment for Olivier, so he will likely take this equipment from someone else. And the equipment that is best for him is pretty straightforward. It's actually the gear I have on my Zerida at the moment. For his weapon, he can really use any weapon at all, doesn't matter. You know, as long as it's a solid weapon with a good amount of attack, that's all you care about. In the first place, there's no weapons that archers can equip that increases hit points. All of them increase attack and skill. So it's just that one of them does 107 attack and 43 skill, and the other one does 96 attack with 54 skill. Okay. So any weapon for Olivier will work. For the armor, the armor does matter for Olivier, and the one you want for him is Last Rites. The reason is simple. Olivier has ridiculously low hit points. Um, as an Erebonian prince, his maximum hit points at level 60 is 2484. That's it, 2484. Even in his bard class, which has more hit points at the expense of attack, he only has a maximum hit points that of 2859. So in both classes, it's incredibly low. In my case, because my Olivier is 5 stars and everything, and I don't have the Heart Bond complete or the uh, Toughness Bond complete, you can see that his current hit points is 1923. So, once again, incredibly low. Thus, the last rates will be pretty important in keeping Olivier alive, especially with regards to getting hit by the AoE attack. Since you'll be at 100 hit points, at least for the AoE, you'll the damage will be reduced by 40%. Okay. For his helm, you're definitely going to want King's Crown. Because King's Crown can increase the damage of adjacent allies by 20%. And in addition, Olivier is likely to activate his aim skill, right? To refresh his other skills. So with the aim skill, you can apply King's Crown on another character. Plus, very, very important to give your Olivier King's Crown. And as for the final piece of equipment, the accessory, you're just going to want one that increases both hit points and attack. The ideal one, I feel, is probably Overlord's Badge because it does do an additional all stats plus 5%, which includes hit points and so on. If you don't have the Overlord's Badge, you know, just Slayer's Emblem is a great option because it does hit points and attack. And Really, it's just those two. Whether you choose Overlord's Badge or Slayer's Emblem just depends on what gear you have available to you. Yeah. He could wear a Lone Star Armlet, but keep in mind that the attack and defense increase will not apply at all in this fight. Right? So you're missing out on that 
edition entirely, which is why Slayer's Emblem or Blur's Badge are the superior options. And once again, you're not going to build a set of gear for him for this for this particular fight, unless, as I said, you have multiple copies of Last Rites, multiple copies of King's Crowns, and multiple Overlord's Badges. I feel that that's not likely, so you'll probably just steal the gear from someone else. And with that said, that's really everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, so, my personal goal for when Ancient Call is released is I probably will not have the Musician and Bard class unlocked, as I said, but I will do my best to finish upgrading all of Olivier's bonds. In particular, I really want to get his Toughness bond upgraded, as well as his uh, Heart bond. So that will be pretty important for increasing Olivier's survivability. Alright, so that's... And, oh, last but not least, I will try as well to get my Sky Archers finished. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do this upgrade right now to raise them to level 9. Right. So that way I only need one more upgrade to bring them to level 10. It's because Sky Archers are used by both Olivier and in this fight, and they're also used by Narm in Hugin and Munin fight. I think it was Hugin and Munin. Uh, off the top of my head, can't quite recall, but I think Narm is the character to use for Hugin and Munin. So... In both fights, you're going to want Sky Archers, thus upgrading them to level 10, if possible, will be a top priority. And with that said, that's everything I wanted to say in this video. So, I hope you found this information useful. Um, if you don't have Olivier, you're going to struggle a bit more than other people would for, the, for this battle. Uh, because you're going to basically need to build up someone else for the Slepnir fight. And it may you may struggle to get enough damage reduction to keep your tank alive, right? Keep in mind, once again, Olivier is effectively offering 30% damage reduction. So I'm honestly not sure how you would make up for that 30%, but I'm sure there are ways. For example, maybe you have a 6-star Ulti Muller. Uh, with a 6-star Ulti Muller who has 4 stacks, this would be a 20% damage decrease. Last right would be a 40% damage decrease, so that's a 60%. Uh, and then you'll have to find out a way to get another 40% damage reduction on your Ulti Muller, which <laughs> without Olivier, I'm not sure how. But yeah, so maybe, so we'll see. So. I hope you, once again, I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.